Hello, and welcome to Body of Christ Ministries, where we're not a denomination, we're the Body of Christ. I'm Brother Glover, and I just want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, for those who have supported in the past, I've seen a few of you out and about, and you've told me that you listen to these messages here on social media, and I just want to say thank you. And to those who may never um, inform me, uh, but you just enjoy listening, thank you as well. All right, I just want to get right into this, and I just want to share a brief message the Lord laid on my heart, entitled, The Misconception of the Fiery Furnace. The Misconception of the Fiery Furnace. And I just want to say this, and of course, you know, I'm talking about Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And most of you um, who are Bible literate, whether you're saved or unsaved, whether you're reg regular church attendees or not, I believe most of you are familiar with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who got cast into the fiery furnace. And I'm not here to get into all that. But there's a, a major point that I want to point out in this particular scripture passage in Daniel chapter 3. So in order for you to really be enlightened and to see where I'm coming from, um, since this is a pre-recorded message and not being recorded live, I just want to ask you to take a moment to get a Bible, preferably a King James. Um, doesn't have to be if you don't want to, but in order to really get the light of this message that I'm about to share with you, it'll probably be much easier to just get a King James version. So if you would pause the video and um, if you're not doing anything and um, grab your Bible real quick, because I want you to look at a few verses with me here in Daniel chapter three. I'm going to read verses 14 through 18, and then I want to expound on a few things because in this particular passage, and, and first and foremost, I want to let you know that this is not to down anybody, any pastor, any Bible teacher who have taught in this way that I'm about to bring correction to, so to speak. Um, now, of course, you see the Bible however you choose to or however you want to, but if you really want a, a thorough understanding of this particular passage and the point that was being made, then hear me out and, and just pray about this and, and, and see what the Lord will show you. But out of all the years I've been hearing this message preached and taught over pulpits, whether it's the church that I attended or whether I've seen it on TV, I've only heard two pastors rightly divide this particular passage and get it right. And it bears witness with my spirit. Well, anyway, without further ado, if you have your King James Bible, um, read with me in Daniel chapter 3, beginning with verse 14, and I'm going to end at verse 18 and just expound on a couple of phrases that, point, that stands out here. Okay, verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods? nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Verse 15, Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbuck, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In other words, we don't, we don't even have to consider putting thought into this because our minds are already made up, all right? Verse 15, excuse me, verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king, period. Verse 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Okay, verse 17 could be a very clear verse to understand. But what throws everybody off, what has thrown so many people off, including many profound preachers and teachers of the gospel, is that it says, but if not. 
All right. And many people have taught that or have taken this to mean that, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and like many other Christians, they believe that God can do things. They believe that God can deliver them. But if he doesn't, that's the way this has been taken to under, to be understood. Now, I want to point something out here real quick. And like I said, there's only two pastors, and I'm not going to call their names out because I don't want to brag on anyone. You know, uh, most of you probably don't even know them anyway. But anyway, only two pastors that I've heard teach this got it right. Okay, now, in verse 17, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Okay, true, God is able. But here's the part that most of us have missed or most people have missed. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king, period. All right, he, he didn't say, they didn't say that maybe he will or, or, he could, or if possible, he said, he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. In other words, this statement was settled. All right, now, let's, let's see what they are talking about. If it be so, but if not, this is what has thrown many people off. All right, let's look at verse 15 real quick, if you have your Bibles with you. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar, it, it was grace that Nebuchadnezzar gave them another opportunity because anyone else would have been cast into the fiery furnace immediately for their uh, rebellion and disobedience. And this is all about worship too, by the way. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, now, if ye be ready, fall down and worship the image, okay? But if ye worship not, okay, this was the underlying factor. If you worship, everything is well. But if not, in other words, if you don't worship, then you will be cast into the fiery furnace. All right, remember that phrase. If you worship well, it will be well with you. In other words, nothing will happen. Everything's going to be all right. And, and, and like in many cases, that's how the enemy pressures us as believers, as Christians, to compromise our Christianity. He puts that pressure, and that pressure is fear of something very seriously and very hurtful happening to us. And in this case, of course, it would be death. Okay, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast at the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Okay, remember this phrase, if ye be ready, well, if not, you'll be cast, there's the consequences. Okay, verse 17 and verse 18. It's the same situation. This was their response to the kings. If you throw us in the furnace, if you don't throw us in the furnace, okay? It says, if it be so, in other words, if you throw us in the furnace, we're not going to worship your gods, verse 18. But if not, in other words, if you don't throw us in the furnace, so in other words, whether you throw us in the furnace or not, we're still not going to worship your God. Has nothing to do with God's ability or whether or not God was going to deliver them. Of course, if you go ahead and read on down in the rest of the passage, you'll see that God delivered them. There was not any smoke or, or hair on their head was singed or, 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 or the smell of smoke was on their, it wasn't on their clothes. All right. So, you know, and of course, Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth person that looked like the son of God in the fiery furnace and they were walking around. He said that they had no hurt. All right. So many times we crack up under pressure with uncertainty, and it's a, it's a lack of faith on our part when we crack up under pressure because we don't know whether or not God is going to heal us. But these guys put their faith in the God, and we and 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 as often we say, God is not moved by our circumstances; He's only moved by faith. For it is impossible to please Him without faith. So, because of the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they made a bold statement to this ungodly king, this pagan king, Nebuchadnezzar, they said, O king, um, we're not careful to answer you in this manner or in this matter. If you throw us in the furnace or if you don't throw us in the furnace, be it known unto you, O king, we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the image. All right. So this is the, the, uh, the misconception of the fiery furnace is that People feel like or people have taught that if God doesn't deliver us from the fiery furnace, 
then, you know, we're still not going to worship you, God. But it had nothing to do with, like I said, verse 17. Um, it said that um, he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king, period. So that was settled. Okay. So I hope you got the point that, I, that I've made. I know I've kind of said it over and over again, um, trying to make a point, but I just really wanted to um, be thorough with this and help you to understand the misconception of this. All right. But the clarity is, or the point was whether or not the king would throw them in the furnace. All right. So their faith wasn't wavering about God's ability or about whether or not God would deliver them. They said he will deliver them. And he did. All right. Well, I hope I made that clear enough to you. Um, I can't get any more elementary than that. I mean, if you still don't agree with it, I mean, fine. I mean, but I just want it to, for those who are, are hungry for the word, for those who were not made aware of this. Like I said, sometimes the Bible, when it was written, you know, sometimes the wording can throw you off. But, you know, when 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 the Holy Spirit opens the eyes of our understanding to things like this, then it's easier to grasp the concept of what was really meant by the writers. All right. Well, anyway, Father God, thank you for this brief message on um, the book of Daniel, uh, the passage about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their faith in God to deliver them. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen the faith of many of your children, many Christians, many believers in this day and age, because I know that we're living in a day and time where we're being pressured to take a stand on righteousness. Father God, we lift up the nation and we just plead the blood of Jesus upon this nation and upon the people who are running for office um, next, uh, not next month, but um, well, by the time I release this video, it will be next month. Um, but anyway, in November, Lord, we just praying that your will be done and that we as the children of God don't think that we got this thing in the bag, but that we will continue to pray that you will be behind the person that you have, that you um, have established to raise up as the next president. In Jesus name we pray. And, and if there's anybody who's not for sure where you stand, I just want to ask you to be sincere in your heart and just Ask Jesus to come into your heart and to be your personal Lord and Savior. Confess that you are a sinner and that you want to turn from your wicked ways and become a child of God and have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All right, saints, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, by, by all means, um, comment, uh, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Rumble. All right, God bless you.